All right, everybody. So we are still looking at the midterm three practice problems. Uh, this is video part two. So in part one, we did problems uh, one through five, and now we are starting on number six. Okay, so number six, finding the area of the ellipse, uh, x squared over a squared, y squared over b squared equals one. Setting up and evaluating the double integral. Okay. Needs to be a quicker way to get to the top. All right. Number six. So find the area of the ellipse uh, x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals 1. I think that's right. Let's see if I can do this quick. Yeah. Where a and b are non-zero constants. Okay. Low battery. Fix that. Right, plugged in. Okay, find the area of the ellipse. So how would we do this? Well, um, basically what you need to do is just understand that the ellipse that we're looking at um, is gonna go to plus and minus A on the x-axis and plus or minus B on the y-axis Uh, perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Uh, I was hoping you would draw an ellipse for me, but it didn't. Uh, whatever. So, um, we have an ellipse like this, and we need to find the area of that ellipse uh, somehow. So there's lots of ways to um, do this. Uh, one way to do it would be to say, well, let's forget about the entire area, and uh, we can just do the area, let's say, like a quarter of the area, and then you could multiply uh, by four. That'd be the easiest way. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to say area of one quarter ellipse as a double integral. So we'll have to multiply by four at the end. I don't want to put like a four here because then I have to keep writing the four. So we'll just know that we're doing a quarter of the ellipse. Okay, so what you want to do is say, we're going to integrate, oops, not like that, from zero up to this curve. That is going to be our y integral. So we're going to go up zero to that curve of dy. Now, what's the equation of that curve? So the equation of that curve is, well, we would have to solve this for y, which we're going to do. So um, you would take this, say, y squared over b squared is equal to 1 minus x squared over a squared, and then multiply by b squared, so you get y squared equals b squared minus b squared x squared over a squared and then y equals plus or minus square root of b squared minus b squared x squared over a squared okay now since i drew this here the plus here corresponds to the top part of the curve this part and the y equals minus corresponds to the bottom part of the curve. So when I'm setting up the integral, I'm only going to need the plus part of this. So we're going to integrate to here. That for y. And then for x, our x integral, we just need to go from here to here. 
So just simply 0 to A. 0, A. There you go. We did it. So that is a double integral for calculating the area of one quarter of the ellipse. So let's do it. Let's see how it goes. So we have the integral from 0 to a. Um, then we integrate dy to get y from 0 to square root b squared minus b squared x squared over a squared and then a dx. So we fill this in, 0 to a, square root, b squared minus b squared x squared over a squared, minus, put in a 0, you get 0, uh, dx. So we just have this integral that we need to solve. Um, so how are we going to do that? Well, I mean, there's different ways uh, we can do it. Uh, we can do a little bit of simplifying. I think we should. I can factor out a b squared there and have 1 minus x squared over a squared, like that. But then I can also take out an a squared on the bottom. But if I take an a squared out of the bottom, then this a squared would disappear but I would get an a squared here, right? Now you can double check that this is correct, right? If you multiply b squared over a squared times a squared, they cancel and leave you with b squared. And if you multiply b squared over a squared times x squared, you get b squared x squared over a squared. So this is correct. Um, then the b and the a can come out as a b over a, integral zero to a, square root, a squared minus x squared uh, dx. Now, how would you do that integral? Right? And the answer is that is a trig substitution integral. Right? I think so. So, do we want to do it or do we want to make Wolfram Alpha do it? Let's look at the answer and see if we want to do that integral. So, uh, integrate. square root a squared minus x squared dx. And you see what you're going to get is a pretty complicated looking thing. Now, how would you do that if you were going to do that integral, right? So here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to look at this and say like, well, what type of substitution is that a squared minus x squared, right? And there's uh, three kinds, right? There's the uh, a squared plus x squared. The substitution you would do would be like theta, um, sorry, like uh, tan theta would be, um, hold on a second. Oh no, I can't pause. So that would be a tangent substitution, right? You would want like uh, like x equals a tan theta, like that, something like that. If you have a squared minus x squared, you would want something like x equals a, should be sine theta, we'll look in a second. And if you have x squared minus a squared, that would be like x equals a secant theta. And the way you get those right is you look at, uh, like, let's see, table of integrals or antiderivatives. And uh, if you look at the ones for the inverse trig functions, um, well, good enough. Um, then if you, this is the first thing I found, but if you compare the bottom ones for the inverse trig functions there, um, what you can see is that the uh, tangent involves a one, the inverse tangent involves a one plus x squared, so constant plus x squared. 
the sine is constant minus x squared, and the secant has x squared minus constant squared. So that's how you would get those um, correct. So here, what you would have to do is you would say, okay, well, this is a sine substitution. So you would say, uh, let, let's say, x equal a sine theta. So dx is a cosine theta d theta. So you fill those in. So b over a, integral from zero to a. We'll figure those out in a minute. Um, inside the square root, we have a squared minus a squared sine squared theta. dx is a cosine theta d theta. If you put in these limits, um, if you put in a zero for x, you get zero equals a sine theta or zero equals sine theta or zero equals um, theta, right? When you do the inverse sine. So that'd be the bottom limit should still be zero. And if you put in an a, a equals a sine theta would imply that one equals sine theta. So that would be a pi over two. So I can change that to a pi over two, like so. Um, then we can continue on here. Uh, under here, you would need the Pythagorean identity which this will turn into a squared cosine squared theta. And then we have a cosine theta d e theta. So we're gonna square root there. So we get a cosine theta, a cosine theta, d theta. So we can cancel, looks like one of these a's with one of these a's. Um, and then we can take this A out, and we have AB, 0 to pi over 2, of simply cosine squared theta d theta. All right. So how do we integrate cosine squared uh, theta d theta? Well, we need our trig identities. So we go trig identities. Any of them should be fine, any place we can find them. So I see, I'm looking for, um, ah, there we go, half angle identities uh, for cosine squared. So we, we see that we have AB, cosine squared theta is one half plus one half cosine two theta, d theta. So we need to integrate that. So antiderivative of one half is one half theta plus antiderivative of one half cosine two theta. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. The two is gonna make us divide by two. So we have one quarter sine two theta. And then we need this from zero to pi over two. So we have a, b, one half pi over two plus one quarter sine. When we put in a pi over two here, it's gonna be two times pi over two, which is pi minus AB. And then when we put in the zero, we're gonna have one half zero plus one quarter sine zero. So this is all zero. Uh, sine of pi is also zero. So one half times pi over two is pi over four. So we get a, b, pi over four. And that is our area of a quarter of the ellipse. So the area of the full ellipse would be four times this, 
or just uh, pi a b. Which makes sense. Like normally the area of a circle is uh, pi r squared, of course. As we all know, area is pi r squared. But if you think about it, that's pi times r times r. And on an ellipse, you have basically like one radius that way and one radius that way. And they are a and b. So if you replace the r with an a and the other r with a b, makes sense, right? So there we go. Um, but uh, deriving that is, you know, relatively involved, right? But it's not that bad. You just have to keep going, right? Not get confused when you see an integral like this that needs trig substitution. Of course, you could have had Wolfram Alpha do the entire integral there. Um, not just the antiderivative, but the definite integral. And still gotten there. All right. Change to polar coordinates. I wish I could snip this and move it, but there's no way I can, right? Oh, I can. Oh, my God. I, I never knew that. And I can just... Is this seven? Eight. Okay. And of course, the problem actually says that what we need to do there is uh, convert that to polar coordinates. So uh, we have to do two things here. We have to understand the region, and we have to make the substitution uh, for polar coordinates. So let's think about that. So let's look at the region, first of all. So we have a, an x integral that's going from 0 to square root 1 minus y squared. And if you think about that, it's not a happy face, it's an arrow. Um, x equals square root 1 minus y squared. If you square both sides, it says x squared equals 1 minus y squared. If you move the y squared over, you have x squared plus y squared equals 1. So that's a circle. So we're looking at a circle, some section of the circle, and it says that x is going from 0 up to the circle. So let me fix my stupid circle. There we go. Um, so if x is going from 0 up to the circle, we're looking at this half. And I know that it's that half because right, we're looking from x equals 0 is this line, and then this line is x equals square root 1 minus y squared, right? It's the equation of the circle, but specifically it's part of the circle where the x value is positive, right? Because this is a plus square root. So um, my integral is like that. Uh, and then for y, we have 0 to 1. So if y is in between 0 and 1, then it's not even the entire half circle there. It is the top half of the circle there. Okay, so that's actually the section of the circle that we're dealing with. Um, so you would have to understand that, or at least it really helps you to understand that, um, because then when we go to set up our integral, Integrating over a section of the circle that looks like that is very easy, right? Because we're just looking at what is a quarter of a circle in polar coordinates. Well, that's just r equals 0 out to r equals, well, 1, because it's a circle with radius 1. So 0 to 1 for the radius 
And then theta, well, of course, this is theta equals zero, and this is theta equals pi over two. So zero to pi over two for um, the limits of integration for um, theta. Okay, then we have our um, function here, cosine x squared plus y squared. We have to remember our conversions for polar coordinates. Hopefully we do. We should remember that x squared plus y squared is r squared. And then also x is our cosine theta, and then y is our sine theta. And also the dx dy is r dr d theta. There's an extra r that we have to put in. So this is pretty easy because of course we should notice that um, x squared plus y squared is what we have right there. So this is just cosine of r. And then dx dy is r dr d theta. And there you go. That is converted into polar coordinates. So then what? Then I think we need to do the integral, right? So we have to integrate this with respect to r. Um, now that's a little bit tricky, right? Because we have r and then cosine um, cosine r. I think we're going to have to use integration by parts here. So we would do like u equals r um, and dv would be cosine r and then du would be dr and then um, v would be the antiderivative of cosine which is sine. I should have put um, that. So then the antiderivative is sine r um, and then that tells me that uh, if I just look at this inner integral here the integral from 0 to 1 of cosine r r dr, right, we know that it, it comes up uv, right, uv minus the integral of v du. So we have uv would be r sine r minus the integral of v du, which is sine r dr, and then the antiderivative of sine r dr is going to be uh, negative cosine, so plus cosine r, like that. Um, what happened here? I changed this to a, a v again, but v was r. Wait, what? Hold on. uv was r sine r. Okay, r sine r. Okay, can't read my own handwriting. So there we go. Um, I guess we might as well, since um, we, we're doing this integral off to the side, apparently. We may as well just kind of go from 0 to 1 there. Um, so we put in a 1. We get 1 sine 1 plus cosine 1 minus, put in a 0, 0 sine 0 plus cosine 0. So what do we get? We get 1 sine 1 is just sine 1 plus cosine 1, plus cosine 1, and then minus uh, just a cosine 0. So minus cosine 0, but cosine 0 is 1, so minus, I guess, 1. So sine 1 plus cosine 1 minus 1. It's kind of strange, but so it is. Um, so then we can just kind of replace this entire integral there that we just did. And we'll have the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of sine 1 plus cosine 1 minus 1. Um, no thetas there, you'll notice. Uh, d theta. So the antiderivative there with respect to theta is sine 1 plus cosine 1 minus 1 theta from 0 to pi over 2. So you fill in the pi over 2 there in for the theta and the zero for theta, and you're going to end up with sine 1 plus cosine 1 
minus 1 times pi over 2. And then when you plug in the 0, you're going to get 0. So I guess that's it. Strange integral. But that should be correct. Back up to the top. All right. Do this now. Copy. Paste. So there we go. Uh, evaluate an integral over a tetrahedron. All right. So this is um, so what's going on? Then 3D space, right, x, y, z. First of all, we have x equals 0. That is this wall. Okay? And then you have y equals 0, which is the back wall. And then you have z equals 0, which is the floor. OK. Um, and then we've got this plane here. So this plane is 2x plus 3y plus z equals 6. Now, um, if you were going to graph that plane, it's a few different ways to do it. One way is to figure out where that plane intersects, the x-axis and the y-axis and the z-axis. So like if you put in, for example, a 0 for x and a 0 for y, and you leave the z as z, what you get is z equals 6, right? So that's actually a point on the curve, 0, or sorry, the surface, 0, 0, 6, which is there. Okay, if you do the same with the other variables, you can find the equivalent points. So like, if you put in a 0 for x and for z, then you get 3y equals 6 or y equals 2. So that's like 2. And if you do the same thing for y and z, you can find x. Three. Okay, so that the plane crosses through um, the coordinate planes where at the points where I've drawn it. So what's going on is let me get maybe a blue. Yeah, that'll work. So basically we need to find um, it set up an integral uh, and now so I just really realizing that this is evaluate the triple integral of f of x y z d v but uh, there's there's not an integral to um, work out right did they give us an f I don't think I, I don't think I gave you an f so we'll set up the integral and then we will stop yeah, that's a, that's fine. Um, so we will set up the integral, but there is not an integral to actually solve. Okay, so uh, essentially we need to integrate over these bounds here. 
So the, when you set up a triple integral, what you do is you make sure you know the equation of the top curve and the bottom curve with respect to z, if possible. So the top curve here is z equals what? Well, it's this, right? This is the equation of it. So if you just moved everything to the other side, except for the z, you could say z equals 6 minus 2x minus 3y, right? That's the equation of the top curve. Now, on the bottom, that also has the equation. The equation is z equals 0. Okay, so you, when you set up a triple integral, you always want from the bottom to the top curve. So our bottom curve is z equals 0. Our top curve is z equals 6 minus 2x minus 3y. And we have, you know, in theory, some function of f, f of x, y, z, but we don't know what it is. But I'm going to do the z integral first. Okay? So that's where you start. Integral from the top curve to the bottom curve. Um, then what you need to do is this section here in the x, y plane, if you call that r, you need to set up a double integral for r. Now, that's not going to be hard. You just need to figure out what it looks like. So what you do is just looking at our picture. We have an x and we have a y. Um, and we happen to know these coordinates, right? This is 2. That's y-axis. So y equals 2 is right there. And this is x equals 3. And that's what that little, that's what this little triangle looks like if you look at it just on the xy plane. And so we just need to integrate over this triangle, which is not going to be too bad, but we need to know the equation of this top curve and this bottom curve, and then we can do our dy integral. Well, how are we going to do it? Well, we just need the equation of this curve, the equation of that line segment is y equals, well, I can see that the y-intercept is 2 minus, and I need it to go through a 3 when um, when you plug in 3, I need to get a 0, right? So I think like 2 thirds x or something, right? That way, when you plug a 3 in here, you get 2 thirds times 3, which is 2, and the 2 minus 2 is 0. So I think that's the equation of that line. Um, once you have that, then you can come back here and say, okay, well, for y, we're going to go from y equals 0, right, up to y equals 2 minus 2 thirds x, f of, oops, I didn't write the original integral there, z equals 0. I'm writing in the the, what variable it is now, just just because maybe it's easier. So we do the z integral first, and then we're going to do the y integral, and then we're going to do the x integral. And for the x integral, well, the x integral is just going to go from here up to here, x equals 0 to x equals 3. Okay. And that's as far as we can do here, of course, because we do not have an actual function to integrate. So we just set it up. Oops. We just set it up, and then we're done. Okay. Problem nine. volume of a solid. Probably we can do that. Right. Using cylindrical coordinates, find the volume of a solid bounded by 
z equals x squared plus y squared, and z equals 12 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. Okay. So what this is going to look like is, well, first of all, we have this, z equals x squared plus y squared. What does that look like? Well, hopefully we can kind of remember that that is one of these guys. right? Z equals x squared minus y squared. So it's a paraboloid. And then here we have z equals 12 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. That's also a paraboloid, but it's going to be pointing the other direction. But we got like, you know, let's call this like 12. Um, then z equals 12 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. Um, that's going to be a paraboloid pointing down this way. Well, and then, so what's going to happen is, I didn't draw this very well at all, but um, let, me, let me try to redraw this a little bit better. Good enough. Um, so what's going to happen here is those two things are going to kind of intersect, oops, kind of intersect in some kind of ring. And then in between them is some kind of volume there. So hopefully that makes some kind of sense as for what kind of shape we're looking at. Um, so we got two paraboloids, one pointing up, one pointing down, and we want the volume in between them. So, um, and they say in a um, cylindrical coordinates here. So that's going to be pretty easy. So cylindrical coordinates, right, the volume is going to be uh, you know, a triple integral. Well, you don't have to do a triple integral, but I'm going to write it as a triple integral here. Um, so triple integral of dv. Um, what's going on? And um, we're going to start with, oops, well, I keep picking the highlighter instead of the, the pen. So just like before, we're going to want a bottom curve to a top. I said curve, but surface. Bottom surface to top surface. So the top surface is, of course, this parabola, which is the z equals 12 minus 2x squared minus 2y squared. But we want that in cylindrical coordinates. So this is 12 minus 2x squared plus y squared. So in cylindrical coordinates, that's 12 minus 2r squared. Right? So that's the top curve. And then the bottom curve is z equals x squared plus y squared, which is z equals r squared. So our bottom curve is z equals r squared. And our top curve is z equals 12 minus 2r squared. Okay, and that's, a, that's our dz integral. And then we need to, we're doing this in polar, so the dx dy is r dr d theta. So we know that. So we need to figure out what are we what do we have for this region here. So same as what we did here, right? We had like um where on the ground are we integrating over? And then we figured out that it was this little triangle. So we just said, how do you integrate over that little triangle? Well, same thing here. What's going to happen is um, we've got these two curves intersecting in this ring, right? And if you just bring that down here, it's, it's a ring in the xy plane. And that's like the r that we need to integrate over, okay? So we need to figure out what that is, which means we actually need to figure out where these two things are intersecting. We actually need the equation of this. Okay, so to figure out the R, we know it's going to be some kind of circle, 
or it looks like it should be anyway, it's going to be some kind of circle like this. But what is it? Well, it's where the two parabolas are equal to each other. So if you have, um, you know, z equals 12 minus 2r squared, and then you have z equals r squared, then where do they intersect? Well, you can set them equal to each other. 12 minus 2r squared equals r squared. So you move this over, you have 12 equals 3r squared. So 4 equals r squared. So you get um, r equals plus or minus 2, but 2 is what we want. So this is a circle with a radius 2 here. So how do we integrate over a circle with radius 2 in uh, polar coordinates? Well, that's going to be pretty easy, right? So r squared, 12 minus 2r squared, dz, dr, r dr, r dr, d theta. So to integrate over that circle, we would just want the r to go from 0 to 2, and r theta to go 0 to 2 pi. So this is the integral that we need to do to calculate our volume. Right, and so the key is just understanding that is um, uh, bottom surface to top surface, and then the shadow on the x y plane. That is how you do these. So volume. Okay, so we do it. So we do the antiderivative of dz to get z between. Uh, r squared and 12 minus 2r squared, r dr d theta. So we will fill those in. So 12 minus 2r squared minus r squared, r dr d theta. So, of course, 12 minus 2r squared minus r squared is 12 minus 3r squared. But then we have this r dr d theta. So we may as well, well, we need to multiply the r in right now. So instead of 12, we'll have 12r. And then instead of 3r squared, we will have 3r to the 3. And then I can get rid of that r. Okie dokie keep going. So antiderivative with respect to r. So we're going to get uh, 6r squared minus uh, looks like 3 fourths r to the 4. Just checking. 0 to 2 d theta. So we put in the 2. You have 6. 2 squared minus 3 fourths to to the fourth minus put in the zero zero minus zero d theta so what do we get we have uh, four times six 24 two to the fourth is 16 16 over four is four four times three is 12 That. And then we do that integral, which um, you, I mean, you must have seen this many times, but um, so when you're integrating d theta between 0 and 2 pi, you know that the result is just going to be 2 pi. So you have 12, you can go 2 pi, 24 pi. Of course, you can actually just do the integral. That's also possible. <laughs> so we did it. Number 10. Yeah, the second part of the uh, exam is going much faster than the first part. It's those optimization problems. They're just so much. Number 10. Of course, we're doing more problems now. And
have to take a deep breath before every problem, right? Alrighty, next problem. Paste it. Spherical coordinates integrating over a ball. Oh, thank you. So nice. Right. Integrating over balls. What are we coming to? This is our life now. Kidoki. Make. I wish it knew I wanted to draw an ellipse. Okay. There we go. So what I just drew is the unit ball. A unit ball x squared plus y squared plus z squared equals one. It's hard to read, so I'm going to erase that. Now they say first octant. So the first octant is where uh, the x and the y's and the z's are all positive. So that's basically the part that's facing towards us. So if you were to essentially uh, have to do this like this. If we cut out this section, that's the section that we're integrating over, just where everything is positive. So it's like one eighth of that ball. Um, okay. So what are we doing? Well, specifically, we're doing integrating over this integral. So. What we need to do is we know a couple things. We need to convert this to um, spherical coordinates, and uh, you know we need to know what the dv is and that kind of thing. So, but integrating over a ball is easy in spherical coordinates because um, normally, like the full, let's say, uh, unit sphere or unit ball is this. So normally you have rho. Rho is your radius. So we go from zero out to one, right? Because this is a radius one. Okay. Then you have two angles. You have the angle phi, um, which might be written that way, or also might be written this way, depending on who's writing it. Um, that's the angle from vertical. So like from straight up, that's, sorry, phi equals zero, and then we're in, or, and then normally it would go all the way down, and straight down is where you have, I keep writing theta first and then trying to correct it into, I have no idea what I just did there. Okay, we're back. And then straight down is uh, pi. Right, so straight up is zero, and then you measure down this way. So that's normally zero to pi, and then theta is the same as theta usually is. So we're measuring from the positive x-axis, which is here. So you go like all the way around that way is a zero to two pi. Now we're not doing that. We're doing the first octant. That's where everything is positive. So the radius is still going to go from zero to one because we're still going from like the origin out to the edge of the ball. The angle phi is gonna be different because uh, we wanna go from straight up, but we don't wanna go all the way down because we don't want all this section down here. So we only wanna go from zero down to pi over two, right? So straight out this way, would be phi equals pi over two. So zero pi over two. And then theta, we also don't wanna go all the way around because we're only doing this first octant. So the x-axis is uh, here. So we only wanna go from here to here and then stop for theta, right? So in the xy plane, what that looks like is, right, zero, over two, pi, pi over two. 
we only want to go from the x-axis 90 degrees and get that section, right? We don't want to go all the way around and get the whole circle. So 0 and also pi over 2. So that is 1 eighth of that unit ball. So that means that our integral over the unit ball is, if we put them in, rho equals 0, rho equals 1, uh, phi equals 0, pi over 2, 2, uh, and then theta equals 0, also pi over 2. So we have the limits of integration for that ball. Then we need uh, our uh, to convert this to spherical coordinates. We can look up all of the conversions. Um, this one's easy though, right? You might remember that rho squared is x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So this is actually e to the rho squared to the 3 over 2. e to the rho squared to the 3 over 2. And of course that's going to be rho to the 3. I just haven't written it yet. And then we have, oh, we're too far. And then we have our dv. So we need to know dv. So, whoa. So you go to triple integrals in spherical coordinates, section 5.5. Um, we just want, I just want the dv. I'm just scrolling to it. There we go. So there's the dv you can see on the bottom. Rho squared, sine phi, and then d all the things. Rho squared, sine phi. Ooh. So um, our dv is rho squared, sine phi, uh, d rho, d phi, d theta. And uh, now let's fix this. Rho to the 2 to the 3 over 2 is just rho to the 3. All right, there we go. All right, so how are we going to do this? Well, we are just going to integrate. So um, this has been set up, right? You see a rho to the 3 there, and then you see a rho squared, d rho. So when we're doing the rho integral, it's set up to use a u substitution, right? Um, they want you to go let u equal rho to the 3. So du is 3 rho squared d rho. So du over 3 is rho squared d rho. So I do the substitution. And what we're going to get is we have e to the rho, rho cubed. Rho cubed is u. Then we've got our um, rho squared d rho, but rho squared d rho is du over 3. So there we go. And then for our limits of integration, uh, what we've got is if you put in a rho equals zero in here, u is going to be rho cubed. So if rho is zero, u is zero. Uh, I want to change that to u. And if you put a one in here for rho, u will also be one. So the limits are still zero and one, turns out. All right. So then we do our integral. So the integral of e to the u du is just e to the u. I'm going to put that one third way out there. And this is going from 0 to 1. Then sine phi, d phi, d theta. So you put in your 1 and you put in your 0, you get e to the 1 minus e to the 0.
Of course, this is e minus 1, and this is a constant, so it can come out. So 1 third e minus 1. All right. So now we've got the phi integral. So we need an antiderivative of sine phi. Of course, antiderivative of sine is going to be a negative cosine. Uh, so we have negative cosine phi from 0 to pi over 2. And still have a d theta integral. So we put in our pi over 2. We have negative cosine pi over 2 minus negative cosine 0 d theta. Um, cosine pi over 2 is 0. So this is 0 plus cosine 0, which is 1. So this is 1. So of course this is 1. It's a constant. It can come out, but it's a 1. So we're not going to see it. And then we have the antiderivative or integral from 0 to pi over 2 of d theta, which will be pi over 2. So 1 third e minus 1 pi over 2. There we go. There is our integral. Next question. I feel like we're making good time, but still a long thing. <sighs> Line integral. Oh, wait, I should. All right, so there are any number of, I mean, there's a number of different types of line integrals, of which this is one. Um, but this is the this is the easiest one. If you did your homework, you did a number just like this. Um, so the idea is this for this particular type. So this particular type is the type where there's a dx, dy, uh, dz there. And so the steps are, um, so c is parameterized, okay, and they, they told you how. They said x is cosine t, y is sine t, z is t, okay, and then t is 0, to 2 pi. Okay, now what about the dx, the dy, and the dz? Well, you find those just by taking derivatives, right? If x is cosine t, then dx is the derivative of cosine is negative sine t, dt. And if y is sine t, then dy is cosine t, dt. And if z is t, then dz is simply dt. So then when you want to do this integral, right, the integral is going to be your bounds are coming from the bounds that are given. Um, so 0 to 2 pi. And then we just fill in everything. So um, 2x, right? We're going to take this part and we're going to use these substitutions. And then for the dx, dy, dz, we're going to use these substitutions. And then we're going to do the integral. And that's all there is to it. So like 2x, x is cosine t. And then dx dx is negative sine t dt, and then plus 3 dy, dy is cosine t dt, and then we have minus y, so minus sine t, and then dz, which is just dt. And this integral 
that we have 0 to 2 pi. Everything has a dt. And then we just have the integral of uh, negative 2. I'm going to write it sine t cos t plus 3 cos t minus sine t. So this is the integral that you actually have to do um, when it actually, when you make all your substitutions there. And that's not going to be a tough integral to do, right? Like um, this part right here, that's a u, that's a du. So the antiderivative is going to be 1 half u squared. So when you do that, you'll have the negative 2 and then 1 half sine squared t. And then you've got the antiderivative of 3 cosine t. Antiderivative of cosine t is sine t with the 3. And then the antiderivative of sine t is negative cosine t. There's already a negative, so we will have plus uh, cosine t all between 0 and 2 pi. Uh, you can cancel a little bit, I guess, the 2s, that's it. So I'm not going to rewrite it just to cancel those 2s. Let's just substitute our stuff in. So if we put in our stuff, we have negative, right, because the 2s cancel uh, sine squared. That'll be sine 2 pi squared plus 3 sine 2 pi plus cosine 2 pi minus negative sine 0 squared plus 3 sine 0 plus cosine 0. And then we work this all out. So sine 2 pi is 0. Sine 2 pi is 0. Gone, gone. Cosine 2 pi is 1. So that's all we get there. Minus Sine 0 is 0, sine 0 is 0, cosine 0 is 1, so minus 1. So we get 1 minus 1, which is 0. So the line integral is 0. Of course, the answer is not the point. The reason it happened was, you know, we had trig functions and we were going from 0 to 2 pi. They're periodic so that's what happened. Oh yeah, I just put this on here. I just wanted to kind of remind you that there are different kinds of line integrals because I know this is like one of our last topics in here. So I feel like people aren't going to know it unless I put it on the exam here. So that's why this exists, not to make it super hard or anything. Right. So um, what's, what's this? Calculate the line integral where f is a vector field and c is the line segment from blah 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 to blah blah blah. All right. So first things first with these. So first of all, you have to understand what we're doing. So when we say integral, line integral of a curve, f dot uh, dr, uh, the way you do this is you need a parameterization of the curve. And then once you have a parameterization of the curve, which we're going to call like r of t equals, you know, something that we haven't found yet. But once we find it, you're going to have an integral from like t equals like some a to t equals some b just like we did on the previous problem but then this integral is not phrased the same as what we had up there so the f is our vector field which is here but specifically it's the vector field with whatever we have for r plugged in and then you have dot dr that's literally a dot product with r prime and then a dt. So this setup is a little bit different than the previous problem, but when we get to the point where it's actually an integral, it's going to look the same. 
um, but the setup is different. Okay, so this is what we need to do, not this. And I think that's the hardest part about these is that um, you have to understand that this notation tells you kind of the type of integral that it is, but it doesn't mean anything like there's you don't just put f here and you don't just put dr here what's dr you don't know um you don't put c here how do you put c here right so you have to know this in order to set up the integral all right let's get started so the c is the line segment here so so we need to parameterize the curve which is given by that line segment, right? Which is zero, zero to uh, five, three. Um, so there's lots of ways that you could do this. Um, you could do like X equals, Y equals, Z equals. And then, um, well, there's no Z, <laughs> sorry. Uh, where you could just put your like, your initial point there and then essentially like the slope to get to here so like from 0 up to 5 is 5 so you could do like 5t and from 0 up to 3 is 3 so like 3t and then that would be t goes from 0 to 1 um, and that's the parameterization you need if thinking about it is hard then you can always do this instead I'll just show you so you just take the point that you're trying to uh, end up at like that and you want to be there when the t is one and then you take your other point which is zero zero and you want to be there when t is zero so you just do t minus one like that and then um and i know that seems complicated but if you actually work it out multiply the t in here you have 5t 3t plus and if you multiply the t minus 1 in here well actually you know it just disappears but normally you know normally you would multiply this t minus 1 in there to the 0 and t minus 1 times the 0 and these would not normally be 0 but you end up with 5t comma 3t which is x equals 5t y equals 3t and if you do this parameterization this way, it's always t between 0 and 1. And of course, that's what we got up here, too. Okay, so we don't need those zeros. Okay, so there's my parameterization. Okay, oops. Um, or actually, I mean, I guess I'll use this. Okay, so we parameterized it. So this is C. All right, now you need R prime. Well, that's going to be really easy, right? You're taking the derivative of these things. So the derivative of 5t with respect to t is 5, and the derivative of 3t with respect to t is uh, 3. All right, and then we can write out our thing. So our integral, our t is going to go from 0 to 1, because that's how we set up our parameterization. Then we have um, this vector field. Then we have this vector field, but we need to plug in our x and our y in there. That's why I moved it down here. So we have y squared. y is 3t. So 3t squared, comma, 2xy plus 1. So the x com or y component is 2x, x is 5t, y, y is 3t, plus 1, plus 1. So that's my f of r, right? This is, right, this was my f, and then I plugged in my r, which was the curve. Then we do a dot product with r prime, which was 5, 3, and then you just throw a dt on the end. Okay, so 
This is your f of r. This is your r prime. And of course, this is r just dt. So this is the integral. This is the integral that we are trying to um, evaluate. So do the dot product. So like literally dot product of this and this. So 3t squared. Well, I mean, it's going to be, of course, that's 9t squared. But um, 9t squared dot product, so times 5. And then plus, and then this thing times the 3. So what do we have here? 3t, 15t squared times 2, 30t squared plus 1. But then times the y component here, which is 3. And then a dt. And you see, it all boils down to just doing an integral with some t's in it. So we got um, 45t squared here. Plus 3 times 30t squared is 90t squared. Uh, plus 3. I guess. Yeah, I guess it's just a random plus one on there, dt. And then this is an integral to do in any way you want. Very easy integral. So we're going to have like 45t cubed over 3, 90. Oh, I really should have just added those together, but I didn't. So I'm not going to now because I'm too lazy. All right. So you put in your one, so we're gonna end up with 45 over three, better known as 15, plus 90 over three, better known as 30, plus three, and then minus, plug in the zero, zero plus zero plus zero. So what do we have? We have 15 plus 30 plus three. So uh, 48, I guess, 48. Okay, so of course the key there is just the setup. Um, you got to know what f dot dr means. Otherwise, you can't do a line integral like that. Okay, so we made it. It's like midnight here. Um, yeah. So I think that's about it. I was going to do like a bonus problem, but I think this is enough. So um, I'm going to post this video and then um, probably by the time you see this video, the real test will be up as well. So you should have all day Wednesday, all day Thursday. Um, and then just as a reminder, um, so class ends on Thursday officially, right? So August 4th is the end of summer summer session but um, you can uh, submit the exam up until Sunday um, so even though this is a Thursday right um, so you should still be able to do that on canvas uh, if you can't let me know and i'll figure something out but um a lot of people are probably going to do it after thursday so uh, if you can't access it after thursday then i'll definitely be sending out an announcement about what to do about that um, but yeah so you should be able to access it up till sunday if you need to or just finish it by thursday no big deal right there'll be all the problems will be multiple choice which makes them easier than this um, all right that's it for now uh, good luck on the exam and enjoy what's left of the summer.